gentleman to see you, sir. How do you do? Let us know us again, Vic. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sit down. Make yourself convenient. Well, boys? What's giving us? We want to give you a write-up in the daily press. Sort of free advertisement. A free advertisement? James, the cigar. So, you boys are from the press. Now, how's business? Plenty miser? Not so many. Hmm. It's a little out of season. Slack. Well, it'll pick up. Um, you sure this uh, advertising is free? Why, certainly, Mr. Ginsburg. James, what are you waiting for? Give this gentleman our life. We'd like to have a statement from you regarding your opinion on talking pictures. Say, uh, what does my opinion mean? It's what the public thinks. Yes, but a statement from you would be quite valuable. Well, I'll say a few words. Just uh, put this down. <coughs> My dear movie fans and fannies, the talking pictures are only in their infantry. And you got no idea of the great value of having on the screen synchronized, synchron, synch, a new paragraph. And in conclusion, I can wish to state that uh, the talking pictures will positive be the predominant, the pre the, 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 oh, it can't miss. Signed, yours respectable, J. Pierpont Ginsburg. P.S. If it ain't a Ginsburg, it ain't a talkie. I thank you. You know, your statement is going to make a great hit with the public. It'll be the talk of Hollywood. Well, I hope so. Say, you know, boys, if I should practice up, I could make a very much better speech. It takes a little time, you know. You've got to get into condition with one of these things. Mr. Applegate on the telephone, sir. Well, boys, I hope you enjoy the cigars. And don't forget the free advertising. Okay. Applegate? Yes? Yes? Well, you're my lawyer, ain't it? Yes, Mr. Ginsburg. I know that those last silent pictures cost you a fortune. But as for realizing any money on them, there isn't a chance. I know, I know that my stubbornness cost me plenty for not making a talkie until now. But what's the use of crying over spoiled milk? You do as I told you, and turn all my other holdings into ready cash. Don't be foolish. I've already engaged the cash. Please, please, let me worry about this. Yes? All right, goodbye. A breakfast, sir. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it goes, James. For 20 years I've been making silent pictures. You push, you show, you make a few dollars. And now comes the talkies. And I've got to start all over again. And you know, James, we're not getting any younger. Sit down, please. You make me nervous standing there. Well, sir, I, uh, your daughter, Miss Ruth. Miss Ruth? Say, say, who's the boss in this house? You know, uh, this high hat business, that's all right for the neighbors. But for regular people, 
Sit down, come on. You know, James, for the past four weeks, I haven't slept a wink fixing up this first stocky. Every dollar I've got is invested in this picture. I hope, sir, you don't suffer any losses. Losses, business, life, it's all a gamble. <laughs> losses. That was a loss. Yes, sir. That was a great loss to us all. It's already 15 years since she's gone. But I remember her just like today. James? How much do you think this first talk you should cost? Why? Why, I don't know, sir. Of course not. Well, I'm going to make a talkie that will kill him. Kill him? Is it a murder play? Sure, a lot of shooting, murders. Oh, it's beautiful. Murder? Shooting? Yeah, a fellow from Chicago wrote it. Oh, he's a great writer. Every day he writes for more money. Isn't he satisfied with the money you give him? I don't know. I didn't give him any yet. And never let me have to tell you this again. And what are you sitting down while I'm talking? A little attention, please. Remember, never let me tell you again. You can go now. Very good, sir. That's a noise, fellow. Yes. Oh, hello, Ruthie, darling. Daddy, you've been up to your old tricks with Jane. You shouldn't be so familiar. Who? What? Me? Oh, did I just give him a boiling up? <laughs> well, you must have seen it with your own eyes. Daddy, you'd better get dressed or you'll be late. You have that reading of the play at the studio. My little honey. <laughs> Hey, 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 your child is no harm. Get another piece Hello, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Ginsburg. Where's my casting director? Good morning, Mr. Ginsburg. Good morning. Is everybody here? Yes, Mr. Ginsburg. Where's my star? Miss Renee. Why, uh, she never gets here till three o'clock. What? She sleeps until two. I'm paying her five thousand dollars a week. That's over eight hundred dollars a day. That's a hundred dollars an hour it costs me while she's sleeping. Oh, if she ever gets sleeping sickness, I'm ruined. You know, she's a star. Yeah, that's why she doesn't come out till night. Well, wait till she gets here. That sleeping beauty. I'll tell her plenty, and I don't mean maybe. Yes, and that was a fine chorus you sent me. I asked you for a chorus of 60. I didn't mean that how old they should be. And such figures. <laughs> and you, Mr. Ote, where's the play? Here, Mr. Ginsburg. Mm -hmm. There are a few changes I made. Uh-huh. More changes. So far, all I've been getting from you is nothing but changes. Ginsburg, I shifted one of the scenes to Greece. More expensive. First, you had the play in Turkey. Then you changed it to Hamburg. Now you're going to make it in Greece. Say, what is this, a lunchroom or there are cook's tour? But, Mr. Ginsburg, I've been thinking that it has been... Stop thinking. You'll get a headache. Hmm. Changes. 
the Willems Shanghai is the leading lady on a tramp steamer. A tramp steamer. Since when have they got special ships for bombs? They take her out 12 miles and throw her overboard. And uh, for that, I need to rent a steamer? That's out. We'll have a shot. It's cheaper. And what kind of a thing is this to put in our play? Love is an itching of the heart that can't be scratched. Nice. It sounds like a dog show. Ginsburg, I've worked on that line for two days. Yeah? Well, I know a guy that worked on one sentence for 20 years. Of course, Mr. Ginsburg, there will be many more changes. Not many. Just one big change. Well, now, all right, now, let's try out the cast. We'll uh, start with the small part first. Face. What does this young lady do? She plays a maid in the chorus girl's apartment. Mm. Come here, little girl. Now, uh, I want you to read your part. And don't be noisy. Just take it nice and easy and very, very intelligent. It's a lot. He did not. Thank you. I'll write you a dancing card. What kind of actors do you send me with stutters? She doesn't always stutter, Mr. Ginsburg. No, not always. Only when she talks. Oh, Mr. Ginsburg, I'd love to make a suggestion. Yeah? I think the audience has always loved to see the hero and the villain have a horrible crowd. What's this? He plays one of the leading parts. Which one? The leading man or the leading lady? Mr. Ginsburg, don't you think I'm right? It's better I shouldn't tell you. Say, you know, this is our drama, not our fairy tale. All right. And now comes the cotton fields. Oh, you play the old grandfather. Oh, this is a fine part. You're coming home from the cotton field, and you see the little kiddies playing on the doorstep. Nice. And then you holler up. What you all doing there, you pecaninners? Now, uh, let me hear you read it. Come on. The old grandpappy's done come from the cotton field. What you all doing there, you pecanini? Done come home from the cotton fields? Is this the way a darky talks? You've got to put some fire into it. You've got to... You've got to say your old grandfather has come home from the cotton fields. What you all doing there, you peeking in earth? That's the way to push it over. Now, uh, study it up. I'll come back to you later. And now comes the big bedroom scene. Outside is a terrible blazer. This is where the villain grabs a hold of the leading lady and says, mm -hmm. My proud beauty, at last I've got you in my closet. If you refuse my hot, boiling, scorching love, 
You'll find your lover's body torn limb and limb. Oh, he's a tough guy. Now, who plays this part? I do. Yes, you do. And then the leading lady says, Oh, you can do this to me. You can take my life, but you can take mine. <laughs> Take my life, but you can't take mine honor. You can take my life, but you can't take mine. <laughs> Are you the little canary? Well, the next time I'm telling you right. Hurry up, make it quick. Have you had your lunch yet? Oh, no. It is a very good idea. It is very sweet of you, monsieur. Where shall we go? I know, but uh, can't we rehearse just a little twice, huh? Oh, but it must be very, very quick, because I have only 15 minutes. I have what you call, monsieur Gilbeck, uh, an appointment with my, uh, my, um, oh, mon dear. Oh, I have forgot. With my uh, couturière. Oh, couturier. Hmm, it's terrible. But just let her hurt just a little bit. We won't be long, huh? Oh, oui, you are a sweet man. I love to rehearse. <laughs> Make yourself at home. Oh, you are so soon big. Very charmant. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Leading Man, you know, dear. Make it hot. Oui, oui. Come in. Oh, adorable one. My precious angel. I'd love you on and on. I'd love you on my honor. On my life. On my soul. Oh, but not on my toes. Oh, you clumsy elephant. Well, uh, you're not exactly an ant yourself. Oh! Oh! I am insult! Oh, oh, how dare you! How dare you speak to me that way! You idiot! You imbecile! Do you know who I am? I am the big star! And what are you? You are nothing! You are the little worm on the floor! But Oh, Mr. Ney, I must apologize for that... that big imbecile... stepping on your little tootsie witches. A person with your ability, your beauty, your personality. Oh, Mr. 
Monsieur Ginsberg, now you have made me so happy. You know, I would do anything in the world for you. A hundred dollars an hour. Then she isn't sleeping, she's fighting. It's expensive, but it's nice. Five soft little fingers. Yet they grip my heart like a vice. Do you know? Oh, gee, I can't make love to you like the heroes in your father's pictures. All I can say is, I love you. Now, you know, when most men say what I'm going to say to you, they get nervous and flustered. But with me, it's... Exactly bought it yet, but do you know that I've been saving up for it all these years? And you can have a pretty swell one too, anywhere you want it. Hello, Rookie, darling. Hello. Good evening, John. Well, good evening, Mr. Ginsberg. My golly, when I look at you two kids, it makes me feel like an old, old man. <laughs> and it only seems like yesterday that I gave you such a smack. You remember, huh? I'll bet you didn't chuck any more snowballs that day. Oh, yes, Mr. Ginsburg. I'm afraid I was a pretty fresh kid. Don't be afraid, you was. <laughs> I suppose you two want to talk business. I'd better leave you. No, no, honey. From you, I got no secrets. Isn't she sweet, eh? Huh? Did you see Greenwald today? No, I didn't, Mr. Ginsburg, but I'm to see him tonight at 8.30. Mm. Well, if you're going to keep that appointment, you'll be late because it's about that time now. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Uh, I had better be going. Oh, Ruti, dear. Will I see John to the door or will you? Good night, Mr. Ginsburg. Good night. Good Daddy, dear, you look worried. Worried? Me? <laughs> Don't be a foolish child. 
say, you don't look so good yourself. You seem to be all flustered up. You're nervous and your appetite is bad. What's his name? It isn't John Applegate, is it? Well, he's a nice boy. And a smart one, too. Say, he must be. He's my lawyer. Why, yes. He... he asked me to marry him. Marry him? And you said yes? Why, yes. So my little Ruthie is going to get married. <laughs> you like him. I'm so happy. Dad, dear, you don't look so happy. What are you thinking about? I was just thinking of your mama. My darling Leah. How I wish she was here now. When she was here, I had someone to tell my troubles, to console me. And then I had you, Ruthie, darling, to love and kiss. And now, you're going away from me. I suppose the only one I'll have to love and kiss will be James the butler. But, Dad, <laughs> I didn't think. There, there. Every girl must have her boy. I had my sweetheart. I can't. I can't leave you all alone. <laughs> now, is this the way a bride should act? Shame on you. Shame. <laughs> Quiet, everybody. All right, girls, off the set, Fred. Oh, All right, boys. Oh. Hamilton. Well, what are we waiting for? Miss Renee is trying on her new gown. That special one we imported from Europe. Ah, here she is now. Oh, that's beautiful. How much did I pay for this gown? Uh, $2,500. It's not so beautiful. At the rate that you're spending for gowns, the next picture I make will be in the Garden of Eden. Well, what are we waiting for here? Why don't we start here? All right, let's go. Uh, give him a bell. Start your recorder. Camera. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the extreme honor of presenting to you the great international star, the cessation of two continents, Miss Renee. <laughs> Glad 
to see you. You know you make me very happy. I am going to sing a few songs for you, and I hope that you will like them. Hello. Hello, sweet you. <laughs> All right, monsieur. One, a two, a three. The whole world of the lover, romantic and frantic. My man is a great lover. He's master of the art. He's knight of like the caveman. He holds me, holds me. But when he acts like that way, I look at him and see. No, no, baby. No good to mama. No, no, baby. Remember where you are. Now you may still want to find me. And that's enough. But Mama sounds like Papa when he plays so rough. Oh, no, no, baby. You cannot sit on my knee. No, no, baby. That is not good for me. You think because I am from sea that you can talk to me that way. Oh, no, no. Welcome for our gulag.
Now, uh, listen, big boy. You know, this is uh, not a funeral march. This is a jersey. You know, uh, hot papa, you can't do thy name. Like Earl Jolstein. Mommy. Hey, what do you know about a thing or a song? I sang songs before you was born. And even before that. Well, you don't understand. This is a big dramatic situation. My wife, she'll run away to the cabaret with us. Listen, old timer. I know the whole story better like you do. Now, just listen to me and I'll show you how it goes. Oh, well. Give me a little fire, you know. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Give, you know. Bring me up. <laughs> running through your head. Sarah, I'm getting very mad. Sarah, it's missing here, it's missing there. Say, go get some clothes to wear. When the breezes blow, Sarah, you ain't a Eskimo. Sarah, I know you think you're cute and sweet, but you carry too much meat. Cleopatra too, and Coco the same like you. I can't figure out what this dance is all about. Twisting like a snake, that's all you do. But stop, but this, but this, but stop. You're acting like a crazy cat. Sarah, what fighting you? Have you got St. Mike and do you think that you like to loan me? Say it to me, you're just baloney. Go back home to the stove and scrub and rub where you belong. Sarah, the way to hang it away. That's the way you do, not me. I ain't not gonna spoil my high-class reputation. I, the great Antonio de Grazio Enrico de Rato. Mm. I sing the great Italian aperita. Uh. You know what is this aperita? Yeah, it's a girl that doesn't answer the telephone. Uh. Say, bologna, macarona, spaghetto. I'm paying the money and you'll do as I say. I sing you my way, or I now sing him. Yeah? Well, you know, sing him. As of a scudden, a garnish. Get me his own as I... Hey, what do you talk for me? Uh, nothing. Uh, nothing? You have your heard what you have your talk. A lame is to a nudnik. A lame is to a gornish, and a lame is to a past good knock. Pull! What did he say, Mr. Ginsburg? Nothing. He's just talked on it. That big faker. Well, what's next? Then he dies. 
what I call big-time stuff. We've had a big day today. That finishes the cabaret sequence, finished the bedroom scene, and we finished the plantation sequence. Someday. My golly, Hamilton. I always said he was our great director. At last, you boys are getting real busy. Uh, Mr. Hamilton. Mr. Hamilton, they just discovered that the microphones have been out of order all day. It's what? Mr. Ginsburg, the voices didn't register in the whole day's work. Oi. But Hamilton, can't we at least put some titles in it and use it for our silent pictures? I'm sorry, Mr. Ginsburg, that can't be done. Oi. We've got to make the whole day's work over. Hamilton. Get me some headache powders. Applegate, something terrible has happened. Yes? Just as I'm about to finish the picture, the recorders go wrong, and I have to retake the most important part of the picture. 
which means the very least a $15,000 total loss. I tell you, it's driving me mad. You mean that you can't use any of it? No. And I had to take it out to a fraction of a dollar where the whole thing should cost. And with this extra expense, it means I can't finish the picture. Because you know the banks won't carry me for another penny. I don't know, Mr. Ginsburg. I think we can arrange for refinancing. Just in a couple of weeks. Oh, my dear boy, you don't understand. If I wait one week for the expense of the studio alone, instead of $15,000, it'll be $75,000. It isn't a matter of weeks, it's a matter of minutes. I must have the money today, today. Hollywood, seven, six hundred. Mr. Ginsburg, we've got to know one way or the other what we're going to do. They're all ready to walk out on us. You'd better come down and speak to them. All right, I will. Applegate, wait for me. I'll be right back. Hello. Mr. Foster? Please. Hello, Frank. This is Applegate. Yes. Listen. Sell everything I own immediately. I've got to raise $15,000 at once. Well, Applegate, you'll take an awful licking if we sell now. Oh, yes, I know, Frank, but I can't help it. I've got to have that money by tomorrow morning. Can we raise that much? Yes, you can raise that amount. All right. Sell. John! I thought it was Dad. Oh, you did? Well, are you terribly disappointed? Oh, I know, dear. Just a little startled. But I'm glad you're here. There's something I must tell you. Yes? Well, I have something to tell you, too. Oh. I... Why, Ruthie? Darling, I told Dad about us. Oh, if you'd only seen the look of anguish in his poor, lonely face. I know, dear, but he's lived his life. We're young. And we're entitled to our happiness, too. But he'd be so alone. I'd never be happy. If I left him that way. And yet, I love you so. And, and always will. Caught you. When the mice is away, the cats will play. What's the matter here? Already you two kids have been fighting? Ruthie, darling. Did this walker make you cry? If he did, I'll fire him. I might as well. Everybody else is fitting.
Mr. Ginsburg, there's no need of anyone quitting. That money will be in your account in the morning. That'll get you got the money? When? Where? How? Hamilton! Hamilton! Hamilton, stop the camera! It's all fixed! Well, dear, at least somebody's happy. Well, kids, this is one day that will go down in the history of cotton pictures. And in two weeks from now, when they will be sitting in the projection room and watching my picture and fighting who will buy it first. And believe me, this time, the voices will be on the record. Because once bitten, twice is too much. Well, is he so sick that he can't come down here just to run the picture for me? The doctor says he can't leave his bed. Well, how sure are you that this electrician can run the picture for me? Well, Mr. Ginsburg, he's the only one around here that knows anything about projecting a picture. You know, this Saturday afternoon, you can't get a regular operator. Just now, a thing like this has to happen to me, when all the buyers are inside. All right, here, ring up the uh, protective agency, to send me a special policeman here at once to watch this door and let no one in while I'm running the picture and tell the cop that if anybody makes any noise around here to throw him out. Now hurry. Yes, sir. Here, hurry up with those records into that booth. Yes, sir. Well, they're ready to run these records. The first reel's here on the top and the rest are all in rotation. Now, don't mix them up. All right, I'll take care of this thing. By rights, I ought to let that little Arabian Ginsburg run his own picture. Imagine keeping me down here Saturday afternoon. Hey, look out for those records. Hey, you. Beat it. Beat it. Beat it. Oh, hello, Grimwald. I've been waiting for you. Well, did you bring your bankroll with you? Ginsy, it better be good. Why? Did I ever make a bad one? No, but you know this is a talking picture. Oh. Well, have a cigar. Then you can kiss your bankroll. Goodbye. Come on. <laughs> Hello, boys. Hello. Uh, we'll start in a minute. And you're going to witness a piece of drama that will break the heart from a stone and break the records of the box office. <laughs> and I'm sure after you witness this piece of art, you will agree with my new slogan. If it ain't a Ginsburg, it ain't a Tucky. <laughs> All right, keep your shirt on.
my proud beauty. You're in my clutches. You thought you'd fool me, eh? Well, if you refuse my hot, burning, scorching love, you'll find your lover's body torn limb from limb. You old grandpappy done come from the cotton field. What you all doing, da, you pickaninny? Okay. I know just what's happened. Don't leave these spies for a second. I'll be right back. All right. Open the door. Open the door. Stop this picture here. Open the door, I tell you. Yeah, Open yeah, the door. Yeah. What's all this noise about? Uh, don't bother me. I've got to stop this picture here. Stop the picture? Just stop nothing. If you take my advice, you'll just keep on going. Huh. But you don't understand. That's my picture. My name is Ginsburg. Ginsburg, is it? Well, my name is O'Flaherty. And there's no Ginsburg putting anything over on an O'Flaherty. Oh, officer, you don't understand. I'm the boss from this picture. I'm the boss from the studio. I'm the boss from everything around here. Oh, yeah, are you? Well, you're doing fine. But my orders are to let nobody go through that door. And that goes for you or anybody else. Well, I must get in this picture. Uh, I'll have to raise a little lump on your head. Oh, Mr. O'Flaherty, if you don't believe I'm the boss here, ask the man in there. He'll tell you. Oh, ain't you the wise little fox? And while I'd be in there, you'd snack through this door, I suppose. Oh, no, you don't. You're not as smart as you think you are. Oh, I wouldn't run away. You can hold me. Oh, there he is. Ask him. He'll tell you. Say, do you know who this fella is? All right. I'll fight. Who is he? Napoleon? So you're the boss, are you? Adorable one, my beautiful angel, I'd love you on and on. I'd love you on my honor, on my life, on my soul. Sweetheart, what a beautiful summer's night this is. Just a night for romance and love. I knew the minute I laid eyes on you, you were about you, Vicky. A criminal is that. Trying to assault an officer, eh? Well, I'll teach you what that stuff means. Hi, Mr. Ginsburg. What's happened? Okay. Tell him who I am. Why, that's Mr. Ginsburg, 
The balls. Well, why didn't he say so in the first place? I didn't know anything about it. Them was my orders. Now, gentlemen, I'm sure this can be straightened up all right. Something went wrong in the projection room, that's all. It's not, Gates. Nothing could help that picture. Imagine for a modern story, stuff like, at last, my proud beauty, I've got you in my clutches. <laughs> <laughs> no, that kind of junk was washed up with the flood. But, gentlemen, now, I'll no you uh, arguing. Mixed up or no mixed up, the picture is all wrong. Well, even if it was right, it would be wrong. Ginsburg <laughs> <laughs> ought to be ashamed of it. I'm a Looks as though poor Ginsburg is all through. How was he? Gee, it is pitiful. It sure was a mess. Oh, what a piece of cheese. Well, you can't teach an old dog no tricks. It was a shame. I'll work on it. But where did Ginsburg go to? Why, I don't know, Mr. Greenwald. He said he'd be right back. Let's see if we can find him. darling. Why, Daddy, what's happened? You, you look like a ghost. It's nothing, dear. I'm just a little tired. Daddy, dear, have something to eat. You feel better then. darling. Oh, it's so good to come home to you. I had a very hard day at the studio. I tried to stop the picture. I begged and I cried and they wouldn't stop. Never mind, Mama. Hey. You and me have had hard times before. And we pulled through. And we can start again. But the only thing that worries me Daddy! Oh. What's the matter? I... 
I thought I was talking to your mama. You've been working too hard, Dad, dear. You need a rest. Yes. I'm all tired out. Why, Mr. Ginsburg. Well, John, it's all over. Gee, that was an hour of torture. An hour. And to me, it was a whole lifetime. The only one that got wise to your idea was Greenwald. He says it's the greatest comedy he's seen in years. Comedy? Yes. Do you know, for a while there, I thought we didn't have a chance. But here it is. Greenwald's cracked for that picture and six more comedies like it. <laughs> yeah. I guess the whole drama of life is a comedy. Well, <laughs> it's a nil wind that doesn't blow somebody pneumonia. <laughs> they tell me, how did you mix up those records so wonderfully? Mix them up? I didn't do it myself. I had a special policeman help me. <laughs> well, you certainly put it over. Yes. Yeah. Well, Applegate, when you get back from your honeymoon, well, what are you waiting for? But, Dad, I can't leave you alone. Don't be afraid. I wouldn't be alone. I'm going to live with you. Uh. My son, I'm proud of you for pulling off a big deal like this. By golly, I don't know how ever I can repay you. No? But Applegate, you should at least gotten $10,000 more on each picture. <laughs> <laughs>